That guy is just unbelievable, man. He's so unbelievable. He's just, he's lightning. He's lightning out there. I mean, it's 11 straight. You can't even be mad they lost to McDavid. Yeah, and I mean, McDavid. I was talking about Fogel. Let's go. Good. We all feel Stop. good. Stop. Never gets rusty. What am I doing? Into my kitchen. Producer Drew, can you fix all this? And when it comes to the Toronto Maple Leafs, you can crumple, crumple, yeet. I saw that going differently. With you, wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Lose 4-2 to the Edmonton Oilers. Aw, shucks. Well, what do you want to talk about? What does everyone want to talk about? Hmm? You think I like this? You think I like this? I, if I had the option of having far more people watch when the Leafs lose, which they do, and I have no control over that, or... I have a YouTube channel, absolutely nobody knows that I work at the zoo, but the Leafs won the Stanley Cup! I would pick the zoo! Ten out of ten times I would pick the zoo! But they didn't give me the zoo option when I worked at the zoo, and I worked at the zoo for a very long time! Have I mentioned that I worked at the zoo? I liked it at the zoo! You get to work outside! I got to feed a camel! Have you ever fed a camel? No! It's a unique experience that not a lot of people get to enjoy! I have the best stories at every party! Now I have the best stories for hockey fans, and that's great, but hockey is just one sport. Everyone wants to know what it's like to feed a camel! You don't do it with your fingers, it's, it's more like a palm. And they do have teeth, but on top they have a plate and they like grind their food. It's interesting! It is a fun fact! But on Monday's podcast, we had a discussion after the Leafs blew a 3-0 lead to the Colorado Avalanche on the weekend, followed by a loss to a team that was at the airport all day. I said that, that that's still so surreal to say those words out loud. They were at the airport all day! I was talking about how Austin Matthews, while still world class and maybe still the best goal scorer in the world, maybe besides Zach Hyman, is just eh. He's just a little below Nathan McKinnon and Connor McDavid. That is barely a criticism, by the way. He may only be, only be the third best player in the world. McDavid had 153 points last season. McKinnon has 100 playoff points in 77 playoff games. What are we talking about? And a lot of people didn't like that. And a lot of people didn't like when I talked about the Leafs blowing a 2-0 lead in this game. Their third time in four games blowing a multi-goal lead. Their third straight game blowing a third period lead. And you might be saying to yourself, third, I thought it was fourth. No, they blew their 3-1 lead to the Islanders in the second period. How nice. Dude, was this game a blowout? Was it bad? No, honestly, no. That was one of the most entertaining hockey games of the season. It was back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And there was hitting and there was chippiness and there were storylines and there was a goal disallowed and then they get it right back and there was a goal in the first 30 seconds and it was high octane, high speed, awesome. The Oilers, I'm convinced their arena has the camera lower than most other buildings and that makes it seem even faster. In a vacuum, this game was fine. You're not gonna win 82 games, dude. And sometimes you're gonna go on little slumps. In a vacuum, this game is fine. But this is arguably their worst stretch of the season. It's certainly their worst stretch in several months. They have lost four straight games. And had they won their last game, they would still have lost three out of four games. But would we care nearly as much? No. I'd feel way better about it because at least it breaks it up a bit. You lose two straight, you blow two leads, you don't like that, you get kind of mad about that. Then they win a game in the second half of a back-to-back -back against the team that, let's be honest, they should be beating. That's fine. That's great. Two points is two points. Um, nom, 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 nom. And then you go to Edmonton. They've won 10 straight games. They have home ice advantage. You are on the road. What do you expect? What do you expect is your best effort. And they gave their best effort and it wasn't good enough and they lost, aw shucks. But that is not the reality that we live in because they lost to a team that was at the airport all day. But at very least they had the resilience in them to not blow a multi-goal lead to the team that was at the airport all day. It was just a one goal lead, regular. Dude, it's bad. It's bad right now. And it's okay to say it's bad. It doesn't mean you don't love the team. For 
God's sake, I'm still here. I, how? How? If, if not powered by love, how am I still here? Every year this happens. Every year this happens where I criticize the team and people go, hey, you're being too hard on them. And then what do they do? They let you down. Did I say you? No, they let us down because I would rather they win. Ah! And I tell you what, Thursday all of a sudden becomes like a must win game against the Flames. Because after that, you get a back to back on the weekend. Vancouver, one of the top teams in the league on Saturday. Seattle, winners of nine straight on Sunday. Oof, Maroon. Welp. Even though the Flames have won more than half of their recent games, they are the only team not in a playoff spot, and you might want to win that one. Although, I will say, you're allowed to win all three. I checked the rules, it's true. Listen, Matthews gets a goal in the first 30 seconds. That's great. Riley gets a goal against Zach Hyman's team, essentially recreating that Pepsi commercial. Also great. Pontus Holmberg comes up with two assists. The dude might just be a top line player. That's great. Surely, if the game was exclusively great things, they would have won! But it wasn't. No, there were some not great moments, and that's not being a hater, that's legitimate criticism! First of all, Zach Hyman barbecued TJ Brody. Barbecued that man. I'm not talking about a juicy, succulent burger, I'm talking about that charred crap at the bottom. Wicked goal from Hyman. Hey! 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 Leafs video crew. Unbelievable. Huh? Unbelievable, their track record. Spots it right away, that's offside. They review it, it's offside. No goal! Two nothing lead intact. The Martin Jones shutout is still alive. And then he immediately follows that up by allowing a top five worst leaf goal against this season. And you might be saying to yourself, Steve, that's not top five. That's the problem! Drysaddle just kind of goes, huh, and it goes in. Part of the problem is Jones had a lot of traffic in front. And I think that might be the Oilers coaching staff adjusting to, oh, Oh, the, the Leafs like don't know how to do this and they just go to the blue paint and succeed. Derek Ryan scored the Oilers second goal that tied the game. Do you want to see the moment the goal happened? It wasn't the moment he shot the puck into the net. It was the moment four Leafs converged on one guy along the half wall! Which leads to like a second later where Morgan Riley's like, uh guys? Pass in front, Ryan scores, Brody goes right back to getting barbecued. Honorable mention Matthew Nyes. Holy cow, this is the worst stretch of his career so far. Right after a stretch where he was playing like an animal. I have full faith he's gonna get it back, but you can't deny it. this has been brutal. I'm sure playing on three different lines in three different games hasn't helped that much. And then the game winning goal. Now, this is one of those be careful what you wish for moments, because I was in several group chats that were complaining about TJ Brody and why not? He wasn't playing well. And some people said, well, how about Riley Lilligren? And that is something I, I would try. That's something I would like to see Sheldon Keefe try a little bit more. Uh, but some people said, what about Simone Benoit? And here's the thing. I love him. I want him extended. I want him to be a Leaf. But that might be a bridge too far. You want to see what Riley Benoit looks like? You can. It happened in real life. Uh, here it is, actually. Here it is right here. They're both on the same side. Uh, don't like that very much. Matthews is uh, he's doing a good job net front. Not sure if that's his job, but, uh, well. And if you were wondering how a somewhat decently placed Warren Fogel wrist shot found its way into the back of the net, should we blame Martin Jones? Uh, no. No. I don't think he saw that one, actually. Bouchard gets the empty net goal. It trickles in. That was the only good news in the game for me because I have him in fantasy. Actually, I have Riley in fantasy, too. You know who else from this game I have in fantasy is William Nylander! Four games now. Four games without a point since the San Jose Sharks and signing that deal. That is not a narrative that is counting. One, two, three, four games without a point. It's bad. Now I want to get to questions and I don't want to rag on this player because I don't think Marner played a poor game. I don't. But this after the game drives me nuts. From Luke Fox, Mitch Marner says, Leafs aren't frustrated. We gotta ignore what everyone else says. We know we're a great hockey team. We show up every night. I mean, the last four games that we've had leads, we've played some awesome hockey, some great hockey. And then another quote, this one provided by David Alter, do you feel frustration seeping in? Mitch Marner said, no, but a lot of people on the outside are trying to do that. It's how it goes for us. 
We know we're doing the right things. Stop. You gotta stop. You got Listen, I think you take a man at his word. I believe Mitch Marner. He has said so many times, so many times, that he ignores the outside noise. He doesn't consume any of it. He doesn't listen to all of it. He simply talks about all of that noise all of the time. But I believe the man when he says he doesn't consume that noise. So, whoever close to the guy is sending him the noise on what is obviously a regular basis, knock it off! Very, I am not mad, please don't report that I'm mad energy. Outside noise, you want outside noise? Outside noise is being a bottom five team at the end of November and having your coach fired like the Oilers were. I don't know if you're acquainted with Oilers fans, pretty noisy. I don't know if you're acquainted with the media in Edmonton, pretty noisy. And here they are anyway, in a playoff spot, legitimate Stanley Cup contenders. Oh, and winners of 11 straight. Their top guys started scoring, some other guys started scoring. Their goalies started to goalie. Stuart Skinner's save percentage starts with a nine. That seemed impossible maybe a month and a half ago. There was lots of noise around that team. Here's your answer. Questions. Did Hyman have these many disallowed goals in Toronto or is this an Oilers curse thing? I'm pretty sure he did have a bunch of disallowed goals in Toronto and I don't remember why. Uh, Matthews had a bunch too. That whole line, basically. Also, maybe they should be disallowing Zach Hyman goals. He headed into this game on a 55 goal pace and if that went in, it would have been 60. It's the only way to slow the man down. What's his cap hit again? Ooh. That's going to make me sad for a long time. I wonder if Zach Hyman makes more or less than Tyler Bertuzzi. Oh, the exact same, but on long term, gosh, I'm miserable. Here's one. I have a feeling Keefe is gone tomorrow. He's lost the team. Yeah, no, the Leafs are uh, game one of a four game Western road swing. There is a less than 0% chance they fire Sheldon Keefe after this game. No way. No way. It's not going to happen. Things are bad right now. There is reason to criticize the roster and its construction. Brad. Brendan. And also the coaching staff. There really is. There really is. But fired after this? No. And last, are we making the playoffs? Um, well, that depends. What do you qualify as making the playoffs? I think it's an interesting question given what happened last season. Like, here, let me ask you this. Is it good enough that they make the playoffs? I get the impression it's not. When they lost to Washington, and then Boston, and then Boston, and then Columbus, and it's up in the air whether or not they actually made the playoffs that year, and then Montreal, we don't like to talk about that, and then Tampa, and then, oh, hey! They finally beat Tampa, but that lead up to when they beat Tampa was bad. We didn't like it very much. And then they finally win a series and they take on Florida and oof do they get caved in. Five games, thank you very much, gone. And like, it was cool to win around. It was definitely cool to finally win around. But after that loss to Florida, you're like, man, it's not just about making the playoffs. Man, it's not just about ending a slump and finally getting a round. Dude, I want them to compete for the cup and with this core that doesn't feel like a wild request year in year out no matter what with a core making a fortune I, why shouldn't we expect that why shouldn't we expect that and why with a core like this one if they are not to be expected to be a cup contender should i be content with that no one should be okay with that not a person! Well, actually, that's not true. You should be okay with that if you're a fan of the other 31 teams. Oh, heck of a halfway mark. Listen, Thursday, you get Calgary. You can only win one game at a time. Start there. You've had a bad run of four games. It's been bad. Things have been yelled. Things have been whispered. Start there. Thursday, one game. Worry about Saturday on Saturday. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends. Careful out there. There's a lot of noise going around.